time for another cape deck, you guys. This time, we had Peter send out an 8.25. So the first one I ever tried, which I actually didn't make a video about, was too heavy. The second one was a bit too short for my taste. And this one, at 8.25, is now 1 16th, still too short. I'm just kidding, you guys. But to give you the actual length of this, this is 31 and 7 16th which is 1 16th shorter than the 31 and a half bare minimum that I ride. But it's time for Ben to grow to take his own advice. Don't be a baby, Ben. Let's get into the specs real quick on this. So it's a 14 and a quarter wheelbase, which is nice. It's got six and three quarters to the nose, six and three eighths, I believe, to the tail. It is exactly 8.25 in the middle. It tapers very slightly to about eight and one eighth over the bolts and then it has a bit of a tapered kick to it. So this one is not carbon fiber I believe. I think it's just fiberglass on the top as you can see and a fiberglass layer on the bottom. So see how this feels. All right I got this all set up. I got it on some eight and a quarter indie standards and I got some pretty worn down Spitfire Classic Formula 4s. They're probably 50 to even 49 millimeters at this point. I just wanted to try and keep it light. Because just holding this, it feels kind of hefty. The deck is 1300 grams, which is on the heavy side for a deck of its size. Most wood decks are, you know, 1250 to 1300. But I did have an 8 inch FA deck that actually weighed 1350. It was weirdly heavy. Anyways, let's get to this thing. My first impressions of this board was that it looks like a twin tail when you're riding it, but it doesn't feel like one. Even though the nose is your average quarter inch longer than the tail, the nose feels a lot mellower. And the reason for that is it has one of those off-center wheelbases that I talk about sometimes. So what I mean is there's more fingers of flat at the nose than there are the tail. So what this does is it makes the tail feel a lot steeper than the nose. Now I get the feeling that this has been designed this way due to the tastes of some of the riders or the owner Peter. And that's fine, design your boards however you want. But the problem is, it's off trend. So most boards these days have a slightly mellower feeling tail than the nose, or they have a pretty even pop feel. So whenever you buck a trend and do something that's a little bit different that way, you're bound to ruffle a few feathers. And I just happen to be one of those people that's muscle memory is pretty set in having a slightly mellower feeling tail than nose. I enjoyed it the most on the Indy 144s. The nose felt pretty mellow, but the tail felt just right. Whenever I tried it on Thunders, the nose felt good and then the tail was too steep. All right, but I know I'm about to lose you guys, so let's get to some more skating. All that skating was from when I had the Indy Stage 7 and the Indy Stage 8s on this board. And you know what? I rode this board for probably about a month and it never changed the way it felt. That is one of the huge pluses of these kind of boards. The only thing that's changing the feel even a little bit is the fact that it's starting to razor tail. Now the fact that it's five plies means that it will razor tail faster than a regular deck. And also you have to be careful because it could chip easily once it gets super razor tailed. But if you're like me and you're not chucking your board down big flights of stairs or just really aggressively skating all the time, it's gonna be totally fine. And if you look at what the guys from Cape are capable of doing on these boards, you'll see, it works.
Now there is one last thing I wanted to get into about this board and that's the slickness. So this is not as slick as say a one of the deluxe slick boards or a Santa Cruz ever slick. It's somewhere in between that and a wood feel. And in my opinion, it's actually kind of perfect. It's not so fast that I felt like I was gonna slip out when trying harder tricks, but it gave me the confidence to know that I was gonna slide pretty evenly and consistently. So the material they use for the bottom of the board, I give that a thumbs up. So while the shape of this board wasn't exactly to my taste, I love the way it felt. I think they're super strong, super snappy. I love that it stays the exact same throughout the life of the board. I want to give Cape a big thumbs up for being on the cutting edge of skateboard technology. I think there's always a place for that. And I look forward to seeing what these guys do in the future. I know they have big plans, but that's all I know, you guys. So thanks for watching. I hope you got something out of this video. If you have any questions for Peter at Cape, put it in the comments below. And if you've tried a Cape, let me know what you think. So thanks for watching you guys, and see you in the next video.